Hello, hello. I'm going to be doing a video today on recommended builds for new Clan Wars players. So what's going to happen is I'm going to show three builds that I've made, all of varying cost that I would personally run if I was starting new in Clan Wars, like today, essentially. Um, I'm going to go through the entire thing i'm gonna first talk about the build and why i chose certain things then i'm gonna go into pvp and show it off and then i'm going to show you a full walkthrough a tutorial of how the build is made so you can do it yourselves so yeah the idea of this is someone measured me on one of my videos asking which it's basically asking what you, i would recommend for certain guns and whatnot because when you first start out in Clan Wars, of course, you don't earn uranium straight away. You have to grind till you get uranium. And you don't earn much resources. You're going to have to grind PvP and raids and all that crap. So you have to be very specific and very careful about what you invest your coins in. Because obviously, you know, you won't have that much. And you can't afford to make a wrong mistake or throw away coins on something. So that's the idea of this. I'm going to show off the bills. I'm going to show exactly what's in them, uh, how much they cost and then hopefully it comes in handy down the road for anyone so the first build as you can see is a steady cab on ml 200s with three crickets this was essentially the idea of what is the single cheapest build that i could make that i would actually think is competitive in clown wars and this is it this is as dirt cheap as i could make a build and in terms of Clan Wars, 7,600 coins is nothing. That's like a legendary gun in a bit. Yeah, so the Steppy Cab, the reason I chose the Steppy Cab is because it's one because it's cheap, but also it's pretty good. To be fair, you get 12 energy, you can get quite a decent sized spider out of it. Uh, the MLs, they are never used these days compared to Biograms, because Biograms are just better, but they are they're cheap and they're, they're okay. They have good durability. I just realized they actually have. Uh, bullet resistance which is nice but guns don't actually have that and same with the crickets they're dirt cheap because no one uses them anymore but if you use them right crickets will be very good they do very very solid damage I just realize I have a why do I have a button okay so if I was starting out my uh, this I was playing my first game of clan wars I'd probably run this first I didn't have any coins to get anything better. Uh, the idea, entire principle behind it is with crickets, especially you just sit back and you just spam. You see an enemies in a general direction, you just keep throwing shots over. Two ammo packs, you will have about 30 odd shots. Mine are fused. I should note, note with the fusions, I have built it in a way that you could build it without any fuses at all. So you'll see in my other builds, they tend to be under mass, but that's because I've accounted for no fusions, essentially. So you could build this exact build, or three of these exact builds, without any fusions at all, and it, we would have that amount of health and everything. So let's just run into a PvP action, I'll show it off. But yeah, if you run this in Clan Wars, you just sit back on the spam area, you have so many sh shots with crickets that the enemy is always going to want to come to you anyway because you do so much damage at range it's just going to be annoying and the mls in a steppy cab as opposed to anything else is not that bad because you get a buff from the steppy cab in itself which ups it to 50 but also it's because because you're using crickets you don't need the biograms as much it's not that big of a loss not having the biograms because you can just all you're doing is just sitting back you're just kiting people Keep spam in the area. You don't need biograms for that, really. So yeah, let's get into it and then, uh, I'll show you what I mean. So say if this was a clan was match, this is what we gotta do. Just keep spamming. The enemy has to come to you when you have crickets more often than not because you have just so much damage output or damage potential. That's it, that's all you do with cricket, so you just sit back behind people. Normally let a tanky guy get in front of you. Yes, I got him. Damage is very good. You, know, you can get crickets on the PS market at the moment for like 350 coins, which is just nothing. 
Like special guns cost less. Cost more sometimes. Look, and the damage is very good. It's very, very good. Hopefully my teammates gonna wander me here. Come on teammate, help me out. Come on teammates. Okay. Oh yeah, the cam was bugged at the moment, so apologies for that. <laughs> they really need to fix it. They updated and they've screwed up the cameras, or oh, spectating cameras on players for some reason. I don't know what the hell they've done. Why? Okay, that's just taking too long. Yeah, I do tend to play PvP like a bit of an idiot sometimes, so I you probably shouldn't do that. I play it like that, essentially. I've backed myself into a corner, which you shouldn't do. With, cr with cricket, you just keep your teammates in front of you and keep shooting over their shoulder, essentially. That way you can maximize your damage. Yeah, let me go into another game just to show you how you should play a game. So yeah, I'll play one more PvP just to show off the build, and then I'll actually construct it in the garage, or reconstruct it in the garage. So yeah, the idea with crickets is, like I said, keep your teammates in front of you and just keep shooting over the shoulder. Crickets do get a substantial buff at range, so the the further away you hit them, the more damage it'll do. Which is always nice. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the 300 coins each, that's quite a lot of damage. Which, uh, Look at the map, this guy's in it. Yes, go ahead, bot. I should state this build isn't going to be a world feature, but it's 7,000 coins all in, so... Stay with me with our guard. <laughs> I, I keep pressing the button, I think I'm using the bygrounds for now. Oh, that's infuriating. Up 
pull down, I pull down, I pull down. Steven, turn around, that's it, buddy. Man. Yeah, as you can see, I'm not losing guns or anything in this build too much, so that's nice. Come on. Yeah, look at the damage. That's that's a thousand coins on all for all three of these guns. A thousand coins. No, not stop guns, please. Ah. Oh, come on, bots, please. Just end this so I can see what's going on. Finally. We're leaving now, but we'll be back. Yeah, so pretty good, to be fair. Like, considering the cost, it's like nothing. actually show you the build yes also I'm running this with J I should say because you get a accuracy buff with max level Jade which is good for crickets but if you were doing any co-driver if you were starting off with co-drivers I would do master jack first it tends to be the best nine times out of ten it's only very specific weapons where you need to use other things and most of that's because you get the um, extra mass and tonnage. You always want to go for this first. Even though it's only 500 kilograms, it goes a long way. Even on like really big fat builds like Bastion Spiders, for example, 500 kilograms, it, it adds up. So I would go for that first. So yeah, so let's, um, let me de deconstruct this and I'll show you how I built it. Get the guns first. So yeah, um, gas gen in this, I should say that's for a cost. The cost of an Apollo at the moment is like six and a half thousand coins on PS, which is almost the cost of this entire build. That's why I've gone from a gas gen. Because the entire purpose of this specific build is when you are like day one, have no coins and you need just something to run. That is when you run this, I would, at least that's when I would run this. Okay, let's see that, do that. That, do that. Give us this crap on me. Okay, this is the layout of the frame, but let's keep out of it. It has as you can see, six mls, but it can balance perfectly on four. It can actually balance really well on three because the guns and the armor that's mounted underneath. Not the gun, sorry. The armor that's mounted underneath acts like a, a stilt, essentially. So it's pretty good. Yeah. 
Yeah, that in case you're wondering that piece is to hold on them and if you put those there just in case you lose legs and they'll hold you up. You tend not to to lose MLs very often at all because they have 800 durability. It's really solid and they have bullet resistance as opposed to body bones which is nice. Gas gen tucked away as well as you can. You don't want your gas gen to get hit obviously because there's zero durability essentially. It's crap. But it doesn't it won't get hit you very often. Some random armor engine. Easy for the guns, mount them on air, mount them onto a frame. You want to use obviously frame part like this for the uh, for guns because damage goes through them, that's the whole point, they are gun mount for a purpose. That's a gun mount as well, mounted for the back, that's for the top of it. Uh, puncher, this is uh, one the new bumper, this is very very good. The ratio on is fantastic and it protects a mountain. This is just some extra armor, essentially. As much armor for Agastian as I could possibly get. Hot Red. Hot Red is about 500 coins on the market at the moment. Kind of cheap. Yeah, the uh, the frames here, that's just so you can mount armor onto them and whatnot. It's 1x8 was so really good when they brought that in. Really helps to diversify your build and like min max and whatnot really does help i didn't realize also when i was building this how annoying mls are when you build around them because the hitbox on them is really awkward so they're very awkward things to build around you don't have that problem with biograms biograms are quite user friendly for the most part Yep, same thing with the uh, the gun mounts you hit. Leave them here because that way you'll eat explosion damage and they're pretty good parts. Also, you have your, I suppose, side armor, you call that. You're going to want to connect it always at two points at least. So you got connections through here, essentially. And you got the connections through here as you go around it. So the idea is if, um, say, if that's all destroyed by there. All of this armor will still be held on by this avenue. So that'll be held on by there and there and there and there. Same thing on this side. Uh -huh. Both the guns. Guns are well armored. As well armored as you can armor crickets. Top one is not supposed to be armored because you're not supposed to be able to shoot it. Of none of the angle to shoot it, I suppose. Because what what players will do is they'll ar put armor all the way around here, which is a good idea in principle. But what will happen is someone will just shoot it at the top of your build, you hit an armor piece by that, for example, and then it'll splash damage onto the cricket. So we move only the cricket at the top. It's not going to get hit all that often because anything shot over is just going to go over the build. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Of it. Eighty pieces. 2,800 health, good survivability, great damage, special range. Yeah, so the first clan was built, I'd run this. If you had no coins for anything better, you, know, you, you need, what was it? 7,600 coins to run this. Right, this is build number two. This is it's just an upgrade, essentially. The same principle is 22,000 coins. So a few upgrades to speak of. One, you've upgraded a steady carb for a Nova carb, which allows you to shield to keep your crickets alive and the build in general. You've swapped out the uh, gas gen for an Apollo, which gives you an extra energy, which you use for a cloak, which is very nice. Cloak on a cricket build is really important. And you've got biograms instead of the steppy uh, legs which allows you to just get around easier. With biograms, you just go in wheel mode until you get to where you want to do, you get to where you want to go, which is the fight. And then when you're in the fight, just get out of them. Play like a normal spider. Alright, 
right, let me run this one in PvP. So show it off a bit. God, I hate MLs. Yeah, so the uh, overall design this is very similar to my Cyclone build. The free gun platform on an overpower and whatnot. God, I love the damage on frigates. It's so good, man. Nice addition of the cloak is when you're pushing up on a guy, you the cloak, you're in a good spot. Is that a play? Nope, that's a fucking leap. Yeah, cloak's always good. Because basically, the cloak is 10 seconds of invulnerability if you play it correctly. Same thing again, is buy gun wheel mode to get to the fight and then once a minute I can just get out of there. So good man. Use my cloak when I peek in the corner. The yeah, I mean look at that damage. I didn't even land all the shots on. That's it. No, poor incinerator build. I hope he's got cap hands for six. Oh wait he does. Yeah, as you can see, that um, extra 15k that we've invested from the first build goes quite a long way. Just add that convenience, add wheel mode for the bio guns, add a cloak and shield as well. I didn't use an overshield that game, I didn't need to, but the shield to keep your guns alive if you play it right, that's always nice. Lovely. So this build's really solid as well. I really like it. Consider it for twenty-two thousand coins. Yeah, it's not many. I would. There isn't any I would take over this for twenty-two thousand coins. Also, the nice thing about Nova Cabs, this isn't a mass fuse Nova Cab. This is just power and resistance. So if you've got the Nova Cab from the Battle Pass that came out whenever, when it originally came out to Nova, you can chuck that in, and it'll save you about six grand, which is nice. Yeah, 22,500 overall. It's really good, this build. Uh, four legs racing forward, also got some stilts as well. You tend not to lose legs very often with an overcab because you have the shield and the cloak, so they tend to stay protected. Plus, players will just go for the crickets when they see you anyway, because they know it's the easiest way to kill it. So, let me uh, deconstruct this one.
Yeah, so as you can see, it's pretty straightforward for the most part. I put in some heavy frames here just because so much of the other frames are connected to it, so that's, I thought that was worth it. Light frames for the most part, otherwise, again, you have 1x8 to go out for attachments and whatnot. It's good framework on this, I think. I like kind of like how we built it. Good old Apollo, Nova Cab. You can fit an Apollo right behind this because of that area over there. That's nice. Again, cricket mounted on gun mounts, pretty similar. Cricket mounted on gun mount. I thought I could get away with one armor pack behind in the spot, just because there's so much of it. It's right in the center of the build, so you're not gonna get hit in it, and you have to take a lot of damage for it to be exposed. Plus, if they get hit, your armor box at this point, they can hit your Apollo at this point also. Yeah, I can't remember if I've noted with the fusions or not. I've built the, each of these builds so that you could recreate them with nothing fused whatsoever. So if you'll notice, when my build is finished, it's going to be under mass because that's going to account for my fusions that have less mass. But if you had no fusions whatsoever, you could build this exact build for 22,500 coins. That's the entire the purpose of it, essentially. Okay. Again, punches, because the ratio is so good. I use punches on most things these days. Yeah, and here's one in the ratio. I'm talking about the um, durability to mass ratio, so it's basically one to one. Whereas most other bu uh, bumpers tend not to be, but it's really good for a one to one ratio. Is quite rare. I like these pieces, the um, what are they called assembly sections, because it allows you to get some really good protection angles on your guns. Again, gun mounts on the side. The explosion razors get eaten up, and then only the bullet damage will go through. Always keep them to the side of your gun. And where we are? 80, yeah. So like 3,000 health, cloak, Nova Shield, good damage, good range. The same principle with the other one, you just sit back, get a teammate in front of you, shoot over his shoulder, and farm was. You know where the enemy spawns anyway, because it's farm was. So that's what you do, you just sit back and keep shooting. Odds are they're gonna have to come to you. And if you land even a single rocket at range, it's gonna do some good damage. Ah. Shit, done space. How did you? Okay. Yeah. Considering, I've said again, since it, considering it's a thousand coins for crickets, the output they put out is pretty crazy. The damage they put out, I mean. So for a first gun, I'd recommend it. Okay, build number three, a little more expensive obviously, this is build number three, and this is my Reaper Biogram Bastion. Again, I've made it so that if it, everything is unfused, this is how you do it. And there's one caveat to this, is that the entire build is fully finished except for the cap can. Cap can is supposed to go right by there. But my account was hacked and someone sold my cap can and I haven't bought it back yet. So in case you're wondering with the build, just finish it and then chuck a cap can right by there to the point where this hood, hot rod hood attaches to it. Just like, like that essentially, do it like that. So that way you've got the armor packs and if your armor pack explodes by the way, it doesn't destroy the cap can, it just damages it. That's a perfect fit for it. 
let's just test this out. Some parts are unmolded. Yeah, no shit. Less ammo, don't matter. Yeah, if I had to recommend any of these three builds to anyone, I would recommend. If we have 36,000 coins total, I would recommend this build because this particular build, unlike the cricket, is good against absolutely everything. The Reapers will do well against dogs, they'll do. Well against hovers because you can just charge and you've got a bastion to take your hits. They'll do very well against other spiders just because you're so tanky and you have a DPS weapon at the end of the day. And this build in particular I, I would recommend for any newer player. Just run. It's very easy to use. Reapers are the easiest thing in the game to use. Just hold the trigger down and look at the guy. So I'll show it off now that yeah, anyone could do this. I just realized I'm going to have to be careful with my ammo because I'm ready to the boat. Oh! Of course, I forgot the box. See me first. Oh my god, you got to be kidding me, no! Please, mercy. Yeah, don't let me I'm okay. Jesus. Let me do that one again because I forgot what happens when bots target the first guy and then I got screwed. challenge I could have completed for that one. It's like get your ass kicked by fortunes. Part of me thinks I should edit out that. Ah, oh, this is kind of funny. No, so yeah, the entire purpose of this build is to get shot, essentially. If you're playing a Bastion Spider with 3000 health, you're gonna wanna take the hits to your teammates. That's normally how it works. What a lot of comps will do, a lot of Spider teams, is they will have a tanky Bastion with a DPS Nova shooting over his shoulder. So you could basically run this build, for example, with the Cricket Spider, the Spider Nova, shooting over his shoulder. And that's how it works. This thing acts like the Tankinus, and the other acts for the DPS. And this will take a lot of damage. Yeah. 
with the two armor packs as well, you would have a lot more bullets. It just because I don't have the cap down, I don't have the thing attached to it. And oh, I'm good shooting, lad. Keep it up. As you can see, you can see just how much damage this thing takes. That's the entire purpose. It is supposed to take damage. Come on, man. How many bullets do I have? Hmm, 31. Alright. Yeah, with two armor packs, I'd have another like, 600 bullets in this, so I'm just trying to show you the build. Yeah. That was close. Yeah, as you can see, I took a lot of hits just then and wasn't scaled at all. Part of me thinks I should have done this video with just the builds and left out the PvP, but no, fuck it. Yeah, I cannot recommend this build in particular enough. If you have the coins and you are new to Clan Wars, you should definitely try it. But yeah, let me um, let me just go through it. Bear in mind, 36,000 coins, so that's what? A relic? I think a relic these days is about 30 odd thousand coins, so you can get this entire build for the price of a relic. And like I said, it's under mass again, because that's to account for the, the no fusions. So mine is fused for uh, weight, but if you didn't have any fusion whatsoever, you could create this exact build and have 3,200 health. So it's, I've adjusted it for that, essentially. And I've also calculated obviously the price because I know it costs 36 grand. Let's just do this side armor. Like I said, when you get a build, just put a cap can right there, facing outwards. Power box. Got a Doppler in here, so uh, the idea is, is Hot Red, Doppler, Capcan, that way you carry Doppler for your team and this build can do pretty much everything, man. Okay, that's a framework. I think I've shown this off plenty of times before, but Yep, six back, six forward, six legs forward, two legs back. You can balance with just those two if need be. It takes a while to dip this thing. Change that to a heavy because I prefer it these days. Apollo, good old Bastion, something in between. Right, so we got 
two gun mounts on it. That buggy floor is for the gun as well as the screen. Got a hot red, got a Doppler. A puncher, which I've actually mounted instead of the small plow, just because of the ratio again. You get most of the durability of a small plow for like 200 kilograms less with the puncher. It's just very solid. Yeah, there's a puncher. And the armor crap. These are nice pieces they brought in. Good ratio on them. Yeah, so if if you are a spider guy in cross out and just going to clan wars, this is the build I would use. Like I said, it can fight everything and anything if it needs to. It can take a down it can take a kick in for the team, which is what you want. And you're just the tanky guy. You like, you go first and the DPS and whatnot shoot over your shoulder. That's the type point of this build. Sorry if I'm going through a bit quick. Got my food ready and I'm kind of hungry. Gun mount. Da, da, da. Yeah, and once it's all finished, you put, like I said, cap gun, face mounted two frames so it fills up a hole nicely. Mount that to it. And then shoots cap guns out there. Just like. Nope. Just like this. And... Uh, what was it? The ammo count I'll go up with the second ammo pack, which is down you know, there and whatnot. But for the co this is basically the price of one relic gun. And this build for the price of a single relic is an absolute steal. Because you have guys, plenty of teams in top 20 of PlayStation Clan Wars who will run in basically this build. It's, it's they have shit fused and whatnot, but you could run this build right now in PlayStation Clan Wars and probably get top 60. I would bet. Pretty four of these guys running in this build would probably get top 60, no worry, I am fairly certain. All for the price of one relic. And it's, it's just absolutely solid. There's not a single build in the game that's better against dogs in my opinion. You just can't beat it. It's got decloak, it's got damage, it's got survivability. You can take at least one dog out with this build in a clan wars fight. Mm. Probably, this is probably worth one or two dog. I'd say two dog builds, maybe one and a half. This should be taken out because it's very easy to kill them. It's just so hard to bring down. Breakers, firebugs, domara. It's going to be really hard to kill these things. This is, builds like Reaper builds like this are the reason that dog builds on PlayStation aren't that popular, or they don't get particularly high. It's because builds can just uh, teams can just run this build, and it counters them. And if you got, if you're going up against a dog team, run two of these things, and you're very very likely to win. It'd be very hard to actually lose it. To be fair, as long as your players know what they're doing, get yeah, dog team to run this. And even if the dog team switches to full hovers, which has happened in the past, you can just charge them with it. Because that's what there is a very good dog clan on PlayStation at the moment called Rush and whenever my clan plays them this is essentially what we run we run this build and if they go dogs then fair enough we've got a really hard counter to them and if they switch to hovers then we just charge them we just wheel mode like this and just fire the entire time and they've got to keep falling back and I mean this thing can get to what 67 kilometers an hour that's pretty fast. Like, uh, Hover is only doing, I think, 80, 80 odds. So you can still shoot them and do damage most of the time. You just chase them down all match, basically. It takes a typhoon ages to kill this thing. Because Bygrams aren't a one shot. They take two shots at least. Good luck hitting the guns. That's not really feasible. You just take shots all day. Yeah, sorry to ramble on a bit there. Yeah, that's the builds, and I would I couldn't recommend them more. No, they are very solid. 
this one especially I've tested to death, but the other two also, if you've got the coins, that's what I would run if I had the coins and I was me. And yeah, hope it helps.